Welcome to the fourth webinar of Novigado Project. My name is Patricia Baeta and I work as a technician at Fernando Casimiro Pereira da Silva School Cluster, which is located in the city of Rio Maior in Portugal. This webinar was developed in the scope of the integration of the Fernando Casimiro School Cluster in the Novigado Project. First, let me give a big thank you all to the speakers for accepting the invitation to participate in this event and to talk a bit about their flexible learning spaces as well as the effects caused in them due to the pandemic. I would also like to thank the session moderator Marcin for his presence and for having accepted the invitation and Sidalia for all the support provided. During the event, I will be sharing the moderation with Marcin to support speakers and answer questions posted by the audience. Before we proceed to the main topic of the event, I would like to give an overview about the Novigado project. So Novigado or active learning and innovative teaching in flexible learning spaces is a project that started in autumn 2019. Uh, the overall objective of the Novigado project is to support schools and related stakeholders in the transition from a conventional and teacher-centered classroom into teaching practices that promote active learning with the innovative learning environments and the use of relevant ICT. The project aims to create an active online community of educators engaged with innovating in their teaching and providing this community access to all project results, uh, okay, including the active learning reference framework, training handbook on active learning, guidelines on innovative learning environments, and recommendations for schools and policymakers. The online community and the results will be linked with the European Schoolnet Future Classroom Lab that provides a long-lasting platform to benefit from the outcomes of this project. So today's webinar focuses on good practices in flexible learning spaces in Portugal, what has been done in spaces in pandemic times. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced schools and teachers to rethink the use of learning spaces. Innovative educators from three Portuguese schools will reflect this matter and will share good practices. The panel of speakers is composed by the following elements. José Miguel Souza, director of the Centro de Formação Edufor, located in Mangualde. Marisa Correia, adjunct professor at Escola Superior de Educação, located in Santarém. And Nuno Mantas, director of the Agrupamento de Escolas de Boa Água, located in Sesimbra. I will now give the floor to Marcin, who will introduce each of the speakers. And I also want to add that after all speakers' participation, the audience can ask questions from the speakers. If you would like to place a question, we ask you to post them through the Q&A chat so that we can select and <coughs> respond them. For my part, I would like to thank you all for your presence and wish you an excellent webinar. It's up to you now, Marcin. Uh, thank you very much, Patricia. Uh, I'm Marcin Zarot. I'm from Poland. I'm one of the experts of the Novigado project from Poland. I'm going to introduce to you the next speaker, Jose Miguel Sosa. Uh, Jose is graduated in mathematics education at the University of Coimbra. He has a master's degree in mathematics foundations and applications with a specialization in school and educational administration. Uh, he's the director of Schools Association Training Center and he's currently director of Edu4 Training Center located in Mangwald. He is an accredited teacher trainer in the areas of mathematics, educational technologies, conception and organization of educational projects. He is the coordinator of the Edu4 Innovative Classroom Lab, the first classroom of the future of the central and northern region of Portugal. He is responsible for the design and coordination of projects in educational technologies and Erasmus+, Plus, where Innova with uh, QI and managing for school of success stand out and uh, he's the speaker in national and international events. Uh, José, the floor is yours. 
Good afternoon, uh, and first I want to say thank you for uh, this invitation. It's an opportunity for uh, talking about something that we are um, very proud of our uh, future classroom lab in Mangwald. Uh, before uh, goes to this issue of, of this webinar, I want to say two things. Who we are? Well, Edward is not a school, it's a group of schools. We involve six schools around us and another school in, uh, in Rwanda, in Africa. Uh, but we are talking about these six schools that are in, located in the, in the center of Portugal. Uh, our headquarter is in the secondary school in Mangualdo, or in North schools. It, this is in this school that in 1916, that inaugurated a flexible learning space that the name is Edufor Negative Classroom Lab is a member of the Turk Dasm Lab network. OK, we are a teacher's training center, but our lab is in the school. And uh, our activities are teacher training. Yes, because as, as, as I say, we are a teacher's training center, but we are uh, use the lab for pupils. That's a lot of basis. Uh, and we use some activities with students with special education needs. And we make some research about the use of uh, this kind of uh, of, uh, of classrooms uh, when uh, some, we make some investigation about uh, uh, materials, about some uh, activities and uh, many of the, the devices. As I say, I, uh, we are uh, headquarters in one of our schools. In this moment, uh, they are more uh, free school uh, schools that have labs like our lab and in the last score we here and remember that we stopped the classes in Portugal in March in the beginning of the March and uh, between September and uh, and the beginning of the March there's 5,000 people that interact in our uh, uh, space why? Because we use the space for students, we use the space for visits, and we use the space for teachers training. OK, now I'm talking about the issue of this webinar. What were we do then in Edufor and with the classroom lab in pandemic times? This is a flexible learning space. And in Portugal, uh, when uh, in the COVID situation, there are some rules that uh, about uh, the use of materials and use of some uh, surfaces, and we stop this kind of activities. We not have classes uh, during uh, this this time, but we do different things because the schools closing many part of this last year. We prepare some of our materials like um, the the tablets and. Uh, the computers that the students and the teachers can use it at home. As we say, if you have materials, if you have devices in our space that the teachers or the students need it for uh, distance learning at uh, their uh, home, we uh, prepare this material and they can uh, use in, in different places. But the lab is open, we can say, and we make some small activities with students. In October, in uh, Cord Week, we have some activities with students. You see in uh, our security model, uh, but with only with small groups. About teacher training, as I say, we, we are a teacher's training center. 9% of our activities uh, during pandemic uh, is in uh, distance basis, uh, but when we have uh, small groups of teachers, like a small workshops, we use our uh, spaces. You see in this photo uh, a group of teachers that may be in November that had some uh, training in the classroom lab spaces, or we use it in a different way. In the in the right image, you see a group of teachers. They are part of the group are in the classroom, the other part are in at home. And we do this why? Because we need to more space and less people using using this space. This is two different situations about the teachers training that we use our lab in the pandemic times. 
another uh, another training uh, uh, situation. This is not TTDR staff for our schools. Part of the group are in our lab. Part are in another schools, in another lab, in another school. The trainee are at home, and we try to split the groups for use uh, uh, this classroom in pandemic uh, times. Okay. Training. We are because in our lab you use many interactive devices. Can you see about this, this photo? Uh, we have a teacher, uh, a school nearby that is invited for the Minister of Education to a project this is the, about the lessons in television and uh, because this teacher is not uh, usual use interactive uh, devices in this, in this way in the interactive um, Prometheum uh, board we make um, some sections with our teachers the teachers that usually use the, the inter interactive uh, boards in uh, their classes and we have some uh, workshop with this uh, colleague that prepare the colleague to make uh, the lessons in the television uh, uh, in Lisbon. So it's a different way of teachers training in the small groups, but we try to think about this. We have a space, we have devices, and we need to adapt the use of, it, of these devices, of this space, of these ideas in these pandemic times. OK, but we are sorry because we are involved in nine Erasmus projects like Novigato is Erasmus project too, and in this time we don't work with our part partners from different countries, and why we hope that in, uh, in brief times we can do this again in face-to-face. -face. We have some meetings on an online mode, but with nine Erasmus projects, with many schools uh, visit us, we need the face-to-face -face mode. The other activities that are involved in some research, and in uh, June, we prepare a scenario that we saw is like uh, the idea is this. If in September and uh, last year, we have again the, the schools to need to, to, to stop or, or to split the classes, we prepare the scenario is like the scenario that if we have students at home or with COVID, or if the school decided to split the class and half part of the class stay in uh, in, uh, in school during uh, one day and the other part of the class stay at home. We prepare a scenario that to help teachers to can use the devices uh, during this time. And we use our materials, we use our team to prepare uh, some guidelines and prepare a 20 minute video. I will show you only one minute the idea that if the teachers need to transfer the lessons for their houses how can you use the book because if you use a paper book and now we are an online mode we try to help the teachers with some with ideas the teacher are at home and use a paper or can make a simple photo and use the one note. Sorry, the sound is very high. How can we you do some STEM activities at home? This is the idea to use our knowledge and our trainings, our teachers to help the other teachers. During this time, we uh, prepare uh, and try to find new uh, stakeholders for our lab because our lab is, uh, when we inaugurated it in uh, 2016, we inaugurated with 14 partnerships 
And during this time, we have um, many uh, meetings with our uh, new partners to try to adapt our space to a maker space. Uh, Acad uh, STEM Academy is a project that we are involved with too, and uh, during this time you are um, trying to find uh, new products, try to find new materials, because we try to think, okay, we have epidemic times, you now sometimes we are not on, but our work, our ideas about a flexible learning space, and our ideas about work in a different way, our ideas about no work in STEM uh, activities and to try to make this space more like a, a maker space you are work, working during this time with our team to prepare the face-to-face -face, uh, working I hope is soon as possible. I want to thank you your time I hope you visit us if you want to visit us in the virtual mode you have the address but as soon as it's possible I want to visit us face to face. You have our uh, email address, our website address, and you have my contacts here. And thank you. This is what's happened in this uh, learning space. As I say, we are a teacher's training center and our space is situated in one of our associated schools. And uh, it's what we are doing during this time. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Uh, I think uh, now we can move on to the second presenter, uh, but maybe Patricia would like to introduce information about the Q&A session. Uh, during the presentations, you are welcome to write your questions in the Q&A &Q um, part of this a webinar and they will be presented to our um, speakers at the end of this webinar. So the next speaker is Marisa Correa. She is an adjunct professor at the Higher School of Education of Santarem, Polytechnic Institute of Santarem. She has a PhD in education in the specialty of area of didactics of sciences by the Institute of Education of the University of Lisbon. She has a degree in chemistry and physics, a master's in education, she specialized in supervision and pedagogical guidance from the Faculty of Sciences at the University of Lisbon. She has a postgraduate degree in education and te digital technologies from the Institute of Education of the University of Lisbon. She is a member of the Investigation Center in Quality of Life. She develops research in the training of educators and teachers in the area of didactics of sciences, environmental education, digital technologies in education, e-learning, distance education. She sub-coordinates the e-learning project from Polytechnic Institute of Santarem and the Technological Center of Higher School of Education of Santarem. She integrates the team of Creative Lab, Sci and Maths, and didact uh, a didactic initiative of the Department of Mathematical and Natural Sciences of SS. Marisa, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. Can you hear me? I think we can hear you, yep. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here and to have the opportunity to share our experience with Science and Math Creative Lab. First, I will present the project in this innovative learning environment in the context of teacher education. And next, I will describe how we have adapted in pandemic times. 
The impact of learning environments on student satisfaction and achievement has aroused high interest of research in recent years. Many schools and other educational providers, namely higher education institutions worldwide, have been making efforts to redesign their learning spaces to enhance the use of digital technologies. Student students and teacher students collaboration and new teaching methodologies. Following these guidelines for reconfiguring learning spaces that emerge from the need to develop 21st century skills, a redesign of an education space was carried out in a Portuguese higher education institution, the Science and Math Creative Lab project. This slide presents the different educational spaces that have been created in the last few years at our school. For example, the active education space arose, arose from the school's participation in the IT lab project coordinated by European Schoolnet that aimed to develop new approaches to integrate ICT on initial uh, teaching education courses. Within the scope of Science and Math Creative Lab projects launched in 2016, two traditional science classroom laboratories were transformed into flexible, comfortable and technology enriched environments aiming to enhance students' engagement and foster their academic success through active and interdisciplinary STEM activities which includes coding and robotics activities and the production of open educational resources. If STEM competency are crucial today, we need to prepare teachers to increase students' interest and knowledge about these four areas. To meet this challenge, it is important to develop a curriculum that effectively integrates mathematics, science and technology and improve teacher education. The school curricula usually, usually compartmentalize knowledge into isolated disciplines in basic and secondary education. In higher education and especially in the Portuguese teacher education programs, the compartmentalization is higher. So we engage future teachers in learning experience that make connections between science, technology, engineering and mathematics. However, Preparing pre-service teachers to embrace the challenge of ch subject integration in innovative learning environments full of digital technologies is a huge task. In the project, we embrace both challenges through collaboration between science and mathematics education teachers with the aim of creating an innovative learning environment to prepare pre-service teachers for the integration of mathematics and science. Creative lab learning activities are configured according to a 70 instructional model. This model includes seven or less moments like engage, explore, explain, exchange, elaborate, evaluate and empowerment. The two labs are organized into different zones related to the seven e teaching models moments and students different needs according to each task. These spaces inspired by the initiative Future Classroom Lab match different learning areas whose aim is the development of different skills. In the area with the chairs on the left, students can present their works, watch videos or listen to the presentation of the contents by the teacher. There are three areas behind the chairs where students can work in groups or individually, they perform laboratorial activities or explore digital resources. In the left side, close to the windows, there is an area where students can work alone or within small groups. At the rear, shown in the figure on the right, there is a lounge area that can be used by students. The Creative Lab is equipped with wireless connection that allows students to explore digital resources and different types of materials related to laboratorial activities of biology, geology, physics, chemistry and mathematics. Since the implementation of the project, 
its impacts have been studied throughout the application of questionnaires and interviews and the analysis of student performance. The results reveal that students value the distinct characteristics of these learning spaces, which give us insights about how they perceive space, pedagogy and technologies in innovative learning environments. Overall, the results reveal that pre-service teachers are globally satisfied with the hardware, software, natural light and acoustics of the innovative learning environments. They are very satisfied with the ILA layout for interaction and collaboration with others. Results also reveal that the technologically enhanced environment with good natural light, acoustics, comfortable furniture and a larger space could have an impact on student satisfaction about the pedagogical space they are using and in their performance. Student teachers are engaged in innovative learning environments and immersed into integrated classes of mathematics and science, where teacher educators of mathematics and science work collaboratively. So, that they are able to promote these approaches in their practice. Science can provide students with concrete examples of abstract mathematical ideas, while mathematics can enable students to achieve deeper understanding of science concepts by providing ways to quantify and explain science relationships. Besides, future teachers develop their pedagogical content knowledge through these approaches. With our approach, we also noted benefits related to the improvement of students' motivation, engagement and understanding of mathematical science concepts. One major advantage pointed out by the students is that this approach promotes collaboration between them. In the Creative Lab, there are learning experiences for students to explore and manipulate digital tools in a contextualized way not only to increase digital literacy, but to develop competencies regarding science or mathematics topics. For example, combining real experimentation with virtual experimentation through interactive simulations. Activ activities introducing programming of robots and drones has the advantage of developing computational knowledge and the integration of knowledge of different curricular areas. We also learn greatly working together and developing common lessons, plans, activities and research. For us, being in a professional learning community is a powerful tool for recording learning and sharing good practices. Co-teaching has proved being very valuable in our teachers' professional development. One of the aims of the project is the production of open educational resources and making them available on several online platforms such as Casa das Ciências and ERT, Portuguese Ministry of Education. The produced resources have, been, have received national awards and resulted from the work developed by the teachers in co-teaching. Their participation in European projects and their experience in mobility programs. Probably one of the major benefits of this project is the fact that many of these open educational resources that were awarded by the Casa de Ciencias, uh, published by teachers, were produced in collaborations with students. For you to get to know the work we have been doing better, I share a list of some of our published papers. Now, I will talk a little bit about how Creative Lab has faced the challenge of the pandemic area. I will start with the measures taken at the beginning of this school year. Most of the classes during the first semester took place in the face-to-face -face learning, except for quarantine situations, teachers who are at high risk of severe illness or courses that usually work in blended learning, a combination of online and face-to-face -face learning. So to adapt uh, learning to pandemic times, some efforts were made, such as some courses combined classroom sessions with remote teaching. The schedules were organized in order to divide large classes. 
but in some cases it was necessary to divide the class between the labs. We established a limit of 12 students in each lab. These labs are very large, so it was not difficult to keep a safe distance between students. It was also developed a schedule for routine cleaning of the two labs between classes and place alcohol based hand sanitizers in each lab at the entrance. An adequate ventilation was guaranteed by opening windows or turning on the air conditioner in the air purifier mode. It was explained to students that they should keep their belongings separated from others and they were discouraged to share items that are difficult to clean or disinfect like computers, robots, etc. Teachers have to ensure adequate supplies to minimize sharing, especially when they perform laboratorial activities. And finally, teachers had to guarantee a safe collaboration between students using digital collaboration tools like Google Drive or Padlet, develop uh, uh, laboratorial activities and go lab online inquiry spaces, and also develop some outdoor activities in school surroundings. At the end of the semester, students presented their projects and online educational resources they produced in online sessions. Many teachers from all around the country participated in these webinars. Our experience with the 20, uh, 2020 lockdown and students and teachers' perspectives that were collected through the questionnaires and applied during that period provided uh, some important elements that we used to face more successfully the present lockdown. Therefore, we prepared the remote teaching taking into consideration the following aspects. Using only one learning management system in our institution, it's Moodle. Strengthen the communication channels between students and teachers. Prepare students to work independently and at distance. Combining teaching strategies, asynchronous and synchronous strategies, and ensuring accessible and diverse technolog technological resources. A great fraction of our learning experience relies on laboratorial activities. So, to adapt to remote teaching, we use interactive simulations like FET interactive simulations provided by the University of Colorado. Virtual experimentation through interactive simulations involving the exploration of interactions between variables constitutes an environment uh, conducive to the active discovery of scientific content in the real contest. Other aspects that we have carefully consider was to align assessment practices with learning activities to provide well organized instruction and clear guidance to students to diversify assessment strategies and instruments and to use technologies that promote collaborative work and formative assessment. What we have learned from the pandemic crisis is that there is no need to go back to traditional learning environments. This experience has shown us that innovative learning environments are the most suitable to adapt to change. For this reason, we strongly believe that these flexible classrooms imbued with digital technology that rely on active pedagogical approaches will succeed in this crisis and in future crises. The future of education may be blended learning. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Marisa. And now we go to our next speaker, Nunu Mantash. Nunu has a degree in chemical engineering from the Higher Technical Institute and postgraduate studies in school administration from the Higher Institute of Social and Political Sciences. He has been a teacher of physical chemistry since 1995. He was the president of the executive council of the school clusters of Sasimbra from 2004 to 2009 
and president of the Provisional Administrative Commission of the Boagua School Cluster during the installation of the grouping in 2009-2010 school year. He has been the director of the Boagua School Cluster since 2010, one of the seven schools in the country involved in the pilot project of pedagogical innovation by the invitation of the Ministry of Education. Nunu, the floor is yours. Thank you. Are you listening to me well? OK. Good. So I'm going to present you a little bit further from the Future Classroom Lab um, and tell you a little bit what we learned uh, with the pandemic. Boagua School of Clusters is in the Quinta do Conde. I hope you can visit us soon. It's in the municipality of Zimbra and it, it, it exists since 2009. It's a very recent group of schools. We have 1,400 students in four schools, from preschoolers to ninth graders. And we have an innovation plan oriented towards the skill development. In Portugal, we have a student's profile at the end of the mandatory, uh, ma mandatory schooling, so we teach those skills. OK, so you, you, I hope you can see behind me images from our um, future classroom web, but today I'm going to teach you how we transform our classes in all of them in future classroom web. What you see there, it's what we do before the pandemic. But before the pandemic, we also uh, add projects in the in classes, like included projects in preschool and primary schools. We work with interactive groups weekly um, and dialogical gatherings that you see there. Uh, the, these groups work with parents, with volunteers. The gatherings were about literature or about um, painting or about music and we did this uh, at least once a week we used to we used interactive met methodologies we worked with the students in a multi-week work plan and we had a lot of materials available in uh, in classes we have students working always in groups like you work in the future classroom but in the classes, as you see there, they work always in group and we don't have separated students from fifth or sixth grade. They work together in the same space. Seven and eighth grade work also together and two of the ninth grade groups also together. So we have heterogeneous work groups. In all these groups, you have two students, for instance, from fifth grade and sixth grade or two students from seventh grade and eighth grade and these four students always work together. So collaborative work, it's among students, but also among teachers, because in each class we have two teachers working and they work in periods of 100 minutes. We use regularly, regularly, daily, in all classes we use technology. The technology can be from school. We have a lot of them from school or personal, you see there also in pictures, um, how we work. Also, we have a non-disciplinary curriculum. If you can see those uh, images there in the timetable, you see that we work. We have 14 or 15 hours a week of work in small group. We don't have Portuguese or math or English or physics. We don't have that. We have work in small group and we have 10 hours of project. Then students have two or one hour of tutoring. We have class assembly. And then the only thing we have separated is sports. So sports, it's, it's, a, different, um, it's a different area, but all the other areas are worked together in these um, small groups or in projects. We work curricular projects related to real life. We present the project to the community and we focus on the 21st century skills development. This is how we work before the pandemic. And what did we do when we got the pandemic in March past year? So we had to adapt 
our system, and uh, this was a problem. But we passed to synchronous and asynchronous activities from preschool to ninth grade. You have there some pictures of our synchronous activities. We, you have there preschool. You have uh, pictures from primary school with parents. And also you have our orchestra performing live, but each, one, each of them in their uh, home. So we had to change for these activities. We passed to online dialogical gatherings. These gatherings are uh, do it not only with students, but also with parents. We started to do online and potential therapies, sometimes online for some students, but for others, we still give them the therapies that they need. And the school support for students in danger of not learning. What is this? These students must attend synchronous activities at school. So at this moment, we don't have all the school at distance, learning at distance. Some of them are attending classes, but in school also. We established partnerships with public and private entities for the use of digital resources because we don't have all of these all of these digital resources in our in our school. So we made partnerships to get more of what we needed. We in the first phase we, we landed more than 80 laptops to the students and teachers, and now we have more than 300 laptop, laptops in use in our community. So they are out there for them to attend classes. And we adapt some of the projects like our orchestra that you see there. So what have we learned with this confinement? We have learned that the, 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 pedag the pedagogical model that has made our students competent in many areas, the, 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 the pedagogical model that you see there, that made, a, made them more responsible, more autonomous, give them the ability to work individually and, and in group, give them the ability to perform tasks and schedule organization um, much better. And this has been a knowledge not only for us, but especially by the parents and the external uh, entities. It was easy to adjust some of the activity methodologies to synchronous moment, moments because they are used to work this way. Interactive groups, uh, they can, they, they do it at the distance. Dialogical gatherings, we adapted to do it synchronous. We have the therapies and also the, phys the physical activi uh, activity. We adapted in a re relatively easy way. The first confinement uh, had little impact on our students' learning. But this was not only good news because we had difficult, difficulties associated with the online project work. It's very difficult to work online in uh, the project methodology, so this was difficult. And the collaboration between teachers decreased. Now the teachers, almost every time they work alone and not in pairs like they worked here presentially. There were difficulties in, in minimizing the, the isolation of some students, especially the ones with greater social and, and economical disadvantages and in the first con confinement. That's why now in the second confinement, the, the one that is it's in progress now, we call these students to the school. So the students that could not attend these this, uh, activities online, we call them to the school and they do all the work here in the school. So how it is now after the confinement and in September and then October until January, how did we perform these classes online? How did our students work? Well, we held on to our, methodolo to our methodological paradigm. So we still work in groups and we had almost no problem with the COVID. As you see, they used masks and the groups are fixed, so they have always the same group. We had individual protection, of course, and a lot of disinfectant. Those computers that you see there, they are the only ones working with them. We have one computer for each group, but we needed them 
for the learning process that we work uh, to maintain, we need them to work in groups. So we still work in groups. We have included in preschool and primary school. We were able to keep the gathering, but the interactive group that included external volunteers, we don't have external volunteers now. Now we have a responsible student that is the, the person responsible for the dynamics of the group, but for, unfortunately, we don't have external volunteers now. Maybe in a few months we can recover these external volunteers, the parents and the grandparents that came to the school and helped us. We work in the similar schedule. We have 100 minute lessons. We have heterogeneous work with group with group with the same four students. Fifth and sixth graders work mostly in the morning. They had classrooms all day, but now they work mostly in the morning and the, in the afternoon we have the seventh, the eighth and the, the ninth graders. OK. Now this year we also have a project called the, dematerializ the dematerialization of the school textbooks. Um, this means that our students from fifth and sixth grade don't use books anymore. They work with technolo uh, technology. They have the manuals in their computers. You can see there one of the classes and the other the others are doing some evaluation in English. So they always work in groups, as I told you. The technological resources that they use is one computer or laptop in each group, or each student has their own their own uh, device. The presentation of projects to the community has disappeared. In, unfortunately, we cannot have parents assisting the presentations now in our school anymore. And the interdisciplinary and collaborative work between teachers has notorious, notoriously dis decreased. This was the two, was the two uh, major problems that we, we have now in uh, our school working with the pandemic. And if you want, you can see there in, uh, in that link the um, our video with the orchestra playing in their home. And if you need any um, have, have any question, you can contact me with those contacts. OK, thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, Nunu. Um, so we listened to three presenters and now we have about 10 minutes for the Q&A session. Uh, Patricia, could you share your screen and start the Q&A session? You have to switch on your mic, microphone. I'm sorry. <laughs> OK, congrats uh, for the three presentations. I only know one space is the Marisa space, Marisa school, um, and I was curious to know the other schools. Uh, well, I've got four questions, uh, one for Jose, one for Marisa and one for uh, Nuno and one for all. <laughs> OK, Jose, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You can hear okay. me. OK, so um, do you do you talk about the equipment um, that you gave to your students? And I want to know um, how, how this distribution was made. Uh, the school got the all equip equipment or do you had some help from the authority or the Ministry of Education? No, the question about the equipment in that uh, the device that we use in the future classroom lab in the other four. Uh, in the first, uh, the first pandemic moment, uh, because uh, all our uh, training sessions, our training for teachers, 
uh, we, we, we go to uh, a distance mode, we need to to give some equipments for some teachers, but uh, the other equipment we uh, the school decide we, because we have uh, our headquarters is is one of our mm -hmm. schools and the school will have a project with the municipality and with other companies and you have some device that you say school you can use it for the students if you need this device we need for this, the teachers because in the first time some teachers don't have devices uh, and we uh, only put devices in, uh, in in the in the school package let's say and the school have uh, our uh, rules for the device in this moment I think in our schools, all the students have devices. And it is very important to say that in Portugal, in this moment, there are a big project from the Ministry of Education that yeah. starts before, that starts before the pandemic times, because it's a resolution of the ministries in March, it's before the pandemic starts, and uh, all students will have uh, received a, a device, an online device. Nuno says something very important, like we can share devices this moment. We have many materials and many equipment in our classroom lab, but it's not easy to share this equipment. And this moment, uh, I think in the, in the end of the, this year, all teachers and all uh, students, we have uh, a device, a uh, mobile device from the Ministry of Education, uh, because it's a, a traditional digital uh, project that involves devices and involves many teachers training uh, during uh, the second or for second uh, week from April, we start uh, a new kind of teachers training in uh, in digital uh, digital uh, pedagogy model. And the idea is that if you have devices, if you have equipment, we not put there in a, in a, in a table. We we need to use because. Uh, it's not easy, uh, like, like say Nunu, with new rules about uh, small groups and about uh, pandemic. You, you you use the space for for uh, flexible activities, but uh, for me it's not possible. We have uh, equipment there, there, and not use it. Okay, okay, thank you, Jose. Uh, Marisa. Yes. Okay, Patricia. congrats. <laughs> mm. I would like to know if um, was the space design based on the curriculum or was the curriculum modified simultaneously uh, with the construction slash readaption of the, the space, the lab? Now that's a, an interesting question. Um, yeah, the first, I think uh, there was a need to change the curriculum, you know, to, to integrate different areas. We had that need because we, uh, we know uh, it improves learning if uh, students are able to integrate those different areas. Now it's more meaningful for their learning. Uh, so I think it started from there. And then uh, we realized we have such a great space why can't we work here together, you know, uh, teachers of science, uh, physics and chemistry with teachers of biology and teachers of math. So we create this great um, environment, a good environment of, of collaboration uh, that I think ex extended to the students. Now students uh, who ended their their master's degrees there, they intend to develop the same practices in their, in their schools in the future. So I think it's uh, it's going well. <laughs> OK, OK, thank you. Thank you, thank you Marisa. No, no. OK, congrats uh, to for your presentation. Um, you told that it was easy to adjust some of the active methodologies uh, to synchronous moments. Um, do you think that hybrid model will it will be a good alternative to overcome the difficulties brought by the confinement? What model did you ask me? Hybrid. Hybrid, hybrid model. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, because you can work an hybrid model, uh, an hybrid way but presentially okay? okay the most important for us is collaboration 
and collaboration in heterogenic groups. Okay, if you can do this, it's not important if you are sometimes at long distance, but it's very important that you would be presentially in most of the time. Okay, because learning it it comes from interaction, it comes from communication. Okay. Um, maybe you can see our spaces because we we work this way in all our classes as phase three. First phase, it's using the uh, future classroom. Second phase is the one that Marisa told us. The teachers start to learn that they can work in a different way. They can work together and they can put subjects together. And the third phase is putting this in action in every space, like in our classes, OK? You don't need a future classroom to work STEM and to work in a different way. And that is the phase three. And maybe the phase four is consolidation of these practices in our classes, because it's very difficult if you only work this two or three times a week that you can consolidate this, this the kind of work. So. I would say that it's not important if it do it sometimes at long distance and sometimes presentially, but the methodology is very important because when they work this way, they can do it wherever they are. OK, if they can, if they must work this way for two months, they will work and they 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 organize their own groups. They made their own meetings. They use their their Google Classroom independently. So they schedule meetings to to organize the work and they don't need the teacher to do this. OK, the teacher only gives them the, the task, but they only can work this way if they are used to and if it's practice in the uh, environment learning presentially. OK, that was the, the major uh, challenge. And when you have that challenge uh, over over past over they, they can work this way every time. Thank you, Nuno. OK, we've got one minute for the last question. <laughs> um, how about the teaching practices? Established in these spaces have changed due to the pandemic. What has changed from before to now? One minute less. <laughs> Please, we can start for Jose. Yes, I think uh, the, the, the teachers are more, more consistent, are more, um, they give now more importance for the digital way of working because, it, like say Nuno, it's very important that in the face to face mode, face to face classes, we use uh, devices, we use uh, uh, classroom teams or other kind of platforms. But I think this moment, the teachers are more um, conscious about the, the digital. The why don't in uh, rural work face to face uh, class use digital equipment for go to a platform for the go to other different kind of things. I think this is the new. The, I don't say a positive point about pandemic because no, no other positive points about pandemic, but we need more uh, work for digital with more uh, importance. OK, thank you, Jose. Marisa? Uh, I just wanted to say uh, that I'm perfectly in tune with what Nuno said. I think the key element for change is collaboration, Co students collaboration and also teachers collaborating with each other. It's the key element here. Uh, about your question, I don't think we've changed much. Much of our practice we had already done relied on technology, on um, innovative uh, approaches. So I don't think we, 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 I think we are more careful about the assessment strategies. Yes, the, yes, assessment was a, 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 an important factor here in, in this whole crisis. Okay. Thank you, Marisa. No, no. OK, I agree with Jose. 
and Marisa. <laughs> uh, assessment. Immediate assessment was one of our things that we already knew it was great to do with this uh, with this technology. Uh, but the pandemic brought some risks because it's much more difficult, as I said in my presentation, to work collaboratively at distance. OK, and in a model that uses essentially communication, it's very difficult and that is a great danger. So that's why I don't think an, an exclusive distance model, at least for the younger students, should work in our in our way for learning. But uh, um, I also learned something. Some teachers said to me that since we work with large groups, 45 to 50 students at the same time, this was the first time they could work with them together because we have them in different spaces, two rooms. And when they work here, live, online, they can work with the 50 together. OK, it's uh, it's one advantage. OK, if you if you need to gather them together, it's easy this way. So you don't have only good things. You have risks, but you also have some good things. Thank you, Nunu. Well, it's amazing how time flies by when the moments are good. Um, I appreciate the participation of the speakers and their excellent contributions to this event. It was indeed a rich afternoon full of sharing knowledge and expertise, providing everyone with the discovery of cases of excellence in the world of education and in my country, Portugal. I would like to thank again the speakers for their presence. Marcin for the moderation, excellent, thank you. And the, all the audience for the participation. Thank you very much and have a nice afternoon and a happy Easter, full of chocolates. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, happy Easter. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.